Hello sweet friends and welcome to the Rebookery channel. I am Gina and today I'm going to work on my altered book junk planner. So this will be the third, I believe it's the third video that I've done on this particular journal. This was a cookbook and I have torn out some of the pages, glued them together, added some sort of color to the bottom pages and now I'm ready to do my final prep um, in in the process that I use before I actually start journaling in this. So this book I let dry because if you remember my last video, if you watched my last video, we got really messy and we added color, inks, um, spray, paint, watercolor, chalk pastels, just whatever you wanted to use, we added these colors to the um, the base page. And we didn't put anything over it. We didn't do gesso or anything, or at least I didn't. And so my book got pretty wet. So you can see where it's starting to, um, the glue started to lift up a little bit because the book was so wet. And that's okay, totally okay, because today's the day that we're gonna finish up the edges. Now, again, this is how I'm doing my altered book. There are lots of tutorials out um, on YouTube about how to make altered books. There are lots of different ways to do them. There are lots of different theories and practices. This is the way that I do mine. I have several of these and through trial and error, this is the way I have found that works the best for me. But you do whatever works for you and modify anything that I've told you so that um, it fits your needs. So one of the things I like to do is have an edge on my pages, okay? So this is the last one I just did and I used fabric and I stitched down the edges of each one of them, each one of the pages. In my planner before, I used tape, and I've used tape quite a few times. This was the first time I actually did fabric. I love the washi tape. It's fun to put it on there. Um, it doesn't have to be done in one session. You can use all kinds of different washi tapes, and it gives it just a nice, clean edge. And this is where you really start to feel the thickness of the pages if you've glued them together. This is where you really start to feel that and you'll you'll understand why you glued them together um, when you put this tape down. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, fabric like I did in this one. And so literally guys, I just sat down at my sewing machine one day. I actually think I did this over several days because I kind of get bored um, you know, I'll do a few and then I'll get bored and then I'll go back and do a few. But what I did was I just sat down at my sewing machine. A lot of times I will fold my book back because now that we've removed the pages and everything, my book is, is going to be pretty flexible. And I'll just run this through the machine and um, I just grab whatever fabric scraps I could find. The Thing that I loved about adding the fabric was that when I would go to journal in this a lot of times I would find a page and not really have any direction or guidance like what I wanted to do but I would look at what fabric I had put on here and I was like oh there's instant inspiration so you can see here's the um, this was some feed sacks a uh, quilt that was uh, made out of feed sacks and so you can see the inspiration that I took from this fabric. And you can see like there's that red orange. And so a lot of times this fabric was what guided me in my journaling. Um, and then again, you can see the blues and the greens. And it didn't necessarily have to be that way, but it just kind of turned out that way. And I didn't, I didn't, intentionally put specific fabrics in here for that plan. I just haphazardly grabbed whatever fabrics I had sitting around, um, scraps and bits, and look, this isn't even fabric. This is um, a Ricola 
uh, lozenge. This is the wrappers. So this wasn't even fabric, but I just stitched these wrappers down the side. This was um, a vintage uh, napkin part of it. And so this one, yeah, this is just some sheer fabric on one side, and then I've got tape and stuff on the other. This one I did some hand stitching. So you don't have to sit here and think this out unless you want to. I am not going to. I'm going to just sit down at my sewing machine and add some fabric. And like this right here, this isn't even fabric. This is um, dress pattern tissue, and I just folded it over and I stitched. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my sewing machine. Uh, one of the things I wanna show you is how I have my sewing machine set up. So I'm using uh, this sewing machine. I have that one over there, but I'm gonna use this one because I was too lazy to go thread the bobbin in the other one. But what I did was I set two books so that my book that I'm sewing through could have something to to rest on and then that way it doesn't put as much stress on the pages and it kind of holds this in place as I push my um, pages through the sewing machine. The other thing that helps me a lot is to kind of gather up whatever fabrics I want and so what I did was I just went through these are my um, just my stashes of my scraps and stuff and so I just went through grabbed whatever I thought I might want um, and then I have a rotary cutter let me grab it here sorry I have a rotary cutter that I just kind of keep on my table here and so I'll just grab whatever I want and then sorry 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 this is so hard to hold while I'm trying to talk and cut at the same time and I'll just run through and cut, you know, some haphazardly cut some scraps, and then that'll be, you know, I'll throw this over in my pile, and I'll use that as I'm pushing the book through the machine. Okay, so I just wanted to show you my setup, and um, now I'll get back to sewing. All right, so here is my book after I sewed all the edges, and I said I wasn't gonna sit down and do it all at one time, but, I did. I had it all set up and it just, I don't know, I just kind of got in the groove and so yeah, I went ahead and sewed them all. So you could have, and I forgot to mention this, but if your pages had come unglued a little bit, you could have gone back over it with um, a glue stick. I didn't just because um, for the most part they were still glued. And I knew that I was just going to stitch right down the edges and that would put them back together. But if you wanted to go through and put some glue on it before you stitched or added your washi tape or whatever you were putting on the ends, you could have done tabs. Um, you could have definitely done that. So now if you look, my book is now coming out this way. But here's the thing. It won't come out anymore than what it already is and the reason why is because I've got all this fabric here that's why it is bulked up I still have lots of room if you see I still have lots of room it's real squishy so I can add anything I want and this is the the widest it will become I mean unless I go crazy and add you know like 70,000 pages so you can see it was kind of the same on this one I think I used some bulkier fabric um, on this. So it made it come out just a little bit more. Like I know this piece right here is really, really bulky and I may go through and trim some of this off just to get rid of some of that bulk. But for now, it's no big deal. It does not bother me. Um, I'm totally okay. And I'm gonna leave my strings just like I left on the last one. I'm gonna leave my strings on the ends because I just kind of like that effect. Okay, so another thing that I want to do before I can start doing um, any journaling in here is I have fallen in love with clear gesso. And I use, shake it up a little bit. 
I use the Liquitex clear gesso. There's lots of different types um, and brands out there. The Liquitex is very gritty and I am addicted to that, um, to that feel on my journal. So I think um, other brands, like you can Google it and you can find reviews for different clear gessos, but I love the Liquitex and I love the grittiness that it puts on my pages. And so I'm just gonna go through and add some clear gesso on a few of my pages, just because when I sit down and start to gesso, I always, or start to gesso, sorry, start to journal, I always like to have um, pages ready to go with the gesso already on it. Now, what the gesso does is it just adds a, a layer um, and it will almost like seal in whatever you've done before. So remember we put all our inks and everything on here. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of sealing that, that in. And I can now go over this with whatever new supplies I want. Watercolor, acrylic, marker, um, pen, you do have to be careful, and I know I've talked about this before, when using gesso and felt tip pens, such as Sharpies. I have ruined so many Sharpies by putting them on gesso that is not quite dry. It will, especially if you're using like white gesso, um, a cheap white gesso, is very chalky and the tip of the pen will actually pick up that chalk and it will dry out your your marker and you won't be able to use it anymore and like i said i have wasted and ruined lots of sharpies because of that so i'm gonna quickly just kind of go through and Cut off some of that excess. There we go. So I don't have so much bulk there. And you can let these pages dry. It, I, if I were gessoing these, I would probably. Um, if I wasn't doing it on camera, I'd probably put some uh, heat gun action on it or I'd go let it set in the sun, but usually the gesso dries pretty quickly. Another thing you can do as you're kind of in this stage is kind of see, is there any pages that I feel like I still need to put something in the gutter? And I know as I was going through here the other day, I saw there was a page that I really wanted to add. It might be this one right here. I really wanted to add something to the center of this. So let me add something. I think what I'll do is just and I'll just use some liquid glue here. I'm going to speed up the rest of this video and I'm just kind of working through the book, um, adding little extra papers, a lot of tissue paper, deli paper. Um, I think I even had maybe some tea bags, but just kind of adding a little bulk to the um, bulk and strength to the gutter and just using my glue and my paintbrush. And um i didn't do all of the pages but i did do quite a few and so i'll just uh, speed this up and in the next video we will um, start making pages start adding stuff to our journal actual real journaling so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you got inspired um, and i hope you are um, healthy and happy i hope you are doing well and i hope you do something creative today Thanks for watching. Bye.